Hello everyone, this is Robert from RC Archery and wanted to make a follow-up video for my float pattern video that I uh, released not too long ago and basically on this it's going to be a two-parter and the first part here is going to be with the draw length set too long and uh, you'll notice with the draw length that's set too long your float pattern is a lot slower and it's going to have a, a broader pattern so you're going to cover more of the target. Um, you'll also notice that um, if you float off the target, you're going to have to put more effort into bringing it back up because your body is stretched out to the max and you just you don't have the, the correct skeletal structure and the, the muscles are, are not able to help bring everything back together for you as easily. So the big movements, try to come back to target, you'll usually go over the target because you're trying, you know, your body's having to try so hard rather to move back to the, the center. So I'm going to get everything adjusted, uh, get on target with the you know, the camera and everything, and then kind of give you a better idea of what it would look like and talk through it a little bit after I'm done. I'm going to zoom way in, gets the focus put on the target better, and then I'll pull it right back out like I did on the other one. Try to get it as close to what we saw in the other video as possible. You can see the pin and the target, how that would work. We'll work from there. So we got a little bit of wind today, and that actually helps. Um, you, you'll notice that when the wind was blowing and it blew me off target and I was trying to come back, you could actually see where my body was overcorrecting, trying to get back to the target. Um, so kind of give you a better idea of it all. And um, I'm gonna take a second video here pretty soon. What I'm gonna do is change the draw length around. I'm actually gonna make it too short, and I'll show you how that uh, compares to it as well. Um, just for reference on here, the draw length is actually not set as long as what you would think. Um, what I did on here is I adjusted the draw length out a little over a quarter inch longer than what is optimal for me. Um, it's coming back against my nose pretty far, um, also back against my face. And it's getting my anchor point almost to the very back of my, my jaw where I'm not going to be able to touch my face anymore and it's going to be floating behind. So that's kind of where I stopped. That was my, my break point with it. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to shorten the draw length up. I'll probably do about a quarter of an inch on that too just to give you a, a good side by side comparison. Alright guys, welcome back. So this is part two of the video for the follow-up on my original float video. So now I've got the draw length set short. That's They're about a quarter of an inch shorter than it normally is. So when your draw length gets too short, you'll notice that your float pattern may uh, shrink down some, um, but it's going to be very busy. It's a lot of movement, a lot of fast movement, you know, maybe even jerks left, right, up, and down. Um, another thing you'll notice too is that you can overpower the bow a lot. Um, you know, with your arm too far forward, your elbow is really high, you're not relaxing the shoulder muscles and uh, the neck muscles here and letting your back do the work. So you have a lot of leverage over the bow with that elbow high, you can really, you know, move a whole lot. Um, with that movement, you're able to pull the bow up off target, um, you may have some, you know, high misses, some issues, you know, along the way with that. Um, also another thing too, um, you know, with, with too short of a draw length with the bow set up, your string's not going to come to your nose, so you're going to be maybe ducking your head down, or you're going to be pulling this shoulder up to try to bring the bow back to your face, and I see that a lot. I see a lot of times people have that shoulder pulled up, and they, you know, to bring that string back to their face to try to get a comfortable anchor point, and that's, you know, creates a lot of problems. Uh, with the shoulder, you know, scrunched up like here, you're creating a pivot point, you know, there, you know, at the shoulder joint, and you'll see a lot of up and down movements. Uh, with too short of a draw length and up and down movements, it becomes really jerky up and down, and you know, it creates a lot of problems because you'll, you'll you'll have that leverage on the back end, and you'll be bobbing around really bad in the front, and and you know, you'll you'll see it drop, and then you'll pull really hard to bring it back up, and, and the release will go off, and the air will go really hot. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll uh, do the same thing again. Flip the camera around, um, get everything zoomed in. Uh, bring it back so that we can see and uh, just kind of go from there. Not 
too far that time. Try it again. Alright. So with that one, I uh, left my shoulder in the correct position, you know, out, down, straight line there. Um, you know, kind of a, a lot of movement, um, kind of a quick, fuzzy movements. Also notice, um, you know, my, my face obviously isn't against the string like it normally is, so the anchor points aren't quite as well. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to pull the shoulder up and bring the string back to my face, and then I'll show you what that looks like as well. So you'll notice with that one, float pattern is still buzzy, still really fast. Um, it's bobbing up and down a lot more on that one. So that's because that hinge in that shoulder, so it's, it's moving in a vertical pattern a lot and um, you know causing some issues there. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna hinge my shoulder again to where I'm collapsing it and, and bringing the string back to my face. And then I'm gonna pull on the shot and uh, let you see what that would look like as you start applying that tension on there and being able to uh, have that leverage overpower what you're doing. You'll notice on that one, um, pulled a couple times just to show you what it would look like. There's a lot of jerks uh, up and down. And then also, uh, you know, just kind of some, some issues with, uh, you know, the vertical movement. Um, it's gonna look a little different depending on the scenario. This is just a very broad blanket statement on the draw length. Uh, I shortened the bow and lengthened the bow string length only. And that's all that's changing. So there's multiple scenarios. Um, the string can be too long, too short. Your loop can be too long, too short. Create the same issues. Um, that's where you know getting with somebody that can you know look at your form or taking videos, taking pictures of yourself, so you can help kind of diagnose it. Trying to see where everything is. Um, you know, going through the drills, making sure that uh, you you've got everything adjusted properly. Uh, you know, comes into play, and you know, really just trial and error down to a, a little bit of a point, you know, and, and finding that uh, that ultimate sweet spot where you float perfectly on target and uh, the shots break really easy and everything's good from there. So hopefully in the future, I'm going to try to rig things with my camera and get things sighted in where I can take some shots uh, with my optimal draw length. So that, that's in the works, it's coming. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet. Um, Every time I take a shot, the camera moves really bad, and I've got to reset everything, and that throws off where uh, uh, you know the sight is set. So, or you know, in, in relation to the camera. So, still working on it. We'll see how it goes. And uh, as soon as I can get that worked out, then I'll uh, post up a video on that too. If you have any questions? Feel free to email me, uh, rcarchery at gmail.com, and uh, I'll be glad to talk to you and um, you know go through anything we need to. Thank you.